Hello, welcome to Let's Talk Rainbow Colors, a program that brings young people from all walks of the world who contribute a major populace at European University of Lefke. Today we are here to discuss and exchange cultural views as we are here as ladies. And my name is Kudakwashi Mnyanyiwa and I'm going to allow these ladies to introduce themselves. Thank you so much, Kuda. Hello, everybody. My name is Isabel Gambora. I'm from Zimbabwe, and I'm currently doing my Master's in Communication Studies. Hello, everyone. My name is Danzi Lulu from the Kingdom of Eswatini, and I'm currently doing Construction Technologies. Hello, everybody. I am Bukis Shuaib. I'm from Nigeria, and I am currently a student of Economics. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Like I said before, today we have dedicated this topic to ladies. That's why we are only girls in here, as you can see. So my theme is how to carry yourself as a girl or a young lady, like in today's societies. So I'm gonna, my first question is, how do you carry yourself as a girl or how are you supposed to carry yourself? Well, that's a rather broad question, but I guess it all goes back to how you were raised and how you see yourself also. So, I mean, growing up, we've always been given the broad term of a woman should be subtle, a woman should be confident, a woman should not be too loud or speak too much. So I think as a woman, you should just carry yourself in a confident manner. Carry yourself in the way that you want other people to see you. If you want other people to see you as a confident, bold woman, then you carry yourself as such. Yes, thank you. I'll extend the question to you as well. How are you supposed to carry yourself as a young lady or as a girl? Well, I think personally, I think one should carry them, themselves with great respect. I believe that if you respect yourself, others will respect you as well. So if I respect myself, the next person that sees me in that way will respect me. Okay, that's good, great. But you notice like things have changed like from the old times and we have now received different technologies and time is changing. Are we supposed to carry ourselves like the way our mothers used to carry themselves? Um, I think, like as you said, things are changing. So I don't think there's a like there's something like a category of a woman. She's supposed to be like this. Mm -hmm. A woman can be literally anything she wants to be as long as she's not like violating any other person's like rights or what they're believing or stuff like that. She can be anything, I believe. All right. And what do you think about the term when we talk about self-love as a girl? Like, how are you supposed to love yourself? Well, self-love, I'm a Christian, so self-love comes even from the Bible, yes. you know, that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to love yourself first so that you can love another person. You can't love the person around you when you don't know how to love your own self. So self-love goes to taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. dressing yourself well, eating healthy, uh, exercising, you know, just keeping yourself happy, do the things that you love, do the things that make you happy, keep yourself around with positive people, and know your own value, like people should not take you for granted, people can't make you a pushover. If you love yourself, if you know your worth, then yeah. you know how to love yourself, therefore you know how to love other people around you. Yeah. Okay, like talking still on the same thing about self-love. Do you think when we're talking about self-love, you should be telling yourself, I love you, or, you know, like <laughs> telling everyone that, hey, I love myself, you know, type of thing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, I think you should look at yourself in the mirror and be like, you are, you're good, yeah. you're, I love you, you're the best person, stuff like that. I think motivation. Uh, right. I probably think um, self-love goes hand in hand with confidence. Uh -huh. So going ahead and telling yourself, I love me, is a good thing because yeah. you need that extra boost of confidence like, every day. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is, but then we should not go over the line into arrogance. So a, I think there's a thin line between self-love and pride or arrogance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people should watch that. But self-love is very important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's really true. Mm -hmm. You're teaching me a lot. I'm going to love myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about self-control. As a girl, how do you, like, self-control? I think it covers, like, a lot of aspects. Yeah. Like, even in our daily lives, like, in the long term. Let's talk about self-control. Um, basically, I feel, um, as a girl, you should control yourself in a way that you act in a way that you won't, like you want other people to act towards you mm -hmm. you shouldn't do stuff that you will not appreciate other people doing to you so anything mm -hmm. that's going to violate th that thing that like limit of yours then you shouldn't do that you understand yes, yes, yes. um i feel like with self self-control it's all about 
we should not u uh, lose the fact that in our heads that we should not forget that in, that in the, still in this day and age, whenever a male does something, it's the reaction by society will be different, and as opposed to a female. So with self-control, I mean, I think you should actually, yes, you're right, think about other people's reaction. Do something to a certain limit because I can drink alcohol, but if I drink too much alcohol, I will be called something. But if a guy does yes, it, true. he's a champ. Right. So it's all about, it is gender. Sometimes it's shaped by gender, but at the same yeah. time, do things to a limit that is acceptable. Um. And acceptance is different. I may drink, okay, not drinking, but I may do something more than you, and you may do it less. But then we are different people, so I just feel like self-control you should practice. So okay, you anything to yeah, I think to echo on what these two ladies say. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to being a woman, yeah. we're already in a society where women are in a bigger fight than men are. Yes, yeah. you know? true. So when it comes to self-control, it goes to self-discipline. Yes. You know, it embraces all of that. To know that I'm already in a bigger fight than the other people around me. Mm -hmm. So I know I need to put up a bigger fight, mm -hmm. you see. So when it comes to self-control, like you're saying that a man can drink as much as he wants and he'd be called a champ. But if I go ahead and drink and go crazy about it, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm labeled as something. So then you do that with regards to the people around you, how you want other people to see you, that you don't lose your value as a woman. Yes. Yeah. But like, if you take a look at the world right now, people talk about gender equality. So by the way you're talking, it means there is no gender equality at all. I feel like it's something we want to happen. We want to have gender equality, but the world doesn't work that way. Like we want, like in the future, possible future, possibly. But the way the world is regulated, mm -hmm. nobody believes in that. We only like it's like something we wish. We wish this is going to happen, but yeah. we always, even as women, we always there's a there are barrier. I'm a woman. I can't do this. I'm a mm -hmm. you know. And the men also judge us like you're a woman. You can't do this. You know. Yeah, so I feel true. like it's not possible now. Uh, okay. That is a topic worthy of a, de of a debate, really. Yeah. I, for one, believe, I'm a Christian as well, and in the Bible, God does say that the men will be the head mm -hmm. and the woman the, the, the neck to support. So, gender equality, I, I feel like there's pros and cons to it. So, and to some extent, I believe in it, and to some extent, I do not agree with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I believe that women should, be, should, should flourish in, the, in fields whereby they have strengths. It, it's always best to do something that you are stronger in. If yeah, I can cook, true. let me cook and not bake, because if I bake, there's, there's more chances of me failing than if I cook. Yeah. Okay. I also think that it goes beyond just, you know, male and female. Mm -hmm. It goes to the business world. It goes to the bigger society. Yes. Because when you're talking about gender equality, I'm thinking that I should be afforded an equal opportunity as any other men. Mm -hmm. I should not be looked at and people think that I can't do something just because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as, a Christ, as she's saying also from a Christian background, you know that the man is the head. But that cannot stop you from being a CEO when your husband is not a CEO. Yeah. You true, can be true. a CEO and still yeah. go back home and bow down to your husband as you mm -hmm. respect him. But the equality is in the business world. I'm allowed to spread my wings as wide as I can. I'm allowed to venture into any field whenever I want to. That's, yeah. true. That's true. Like you said, it's a topic to debate on. But moving on with time, what's your personal hygiene for a girl? No, we talked about self-love, how you're supposed to care yourself. And when we're talking about personal hygiene, what do you think? I think oh, that's self-explanatory. It's just supposed to keep clean, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to look like, you know, that reminds me of how women now, we have like a standardized uh, state of how looking pretty or how looking good is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But self-hygiene is just basically Keeping clean, it doesn't really matter what you wear or how you decide to wear it, but as long as it's clean, as long as you are keeping yourself clean, that's just personal hygiene. Yourself and where you stay, your environment, the things mm -hmm. that are around you. Yeah. yeah. Anyone to uh, Self-hygiene goes, goes a long way. I mean, I feel like we, we are very conscious people, so I would, I would like to walk into a room and know that I probably let's just go with showering daily knowing that I, I smell okay, because if, yeah. I, if I know that I smell okay, I'm confident. But mm -hmm. it, it also goes in hand in hand with your confidence and how you will approach people, because, I mean, you're not going to walk up to someone knowing that, yo, I smell funky today. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, as ladies, as girls, we are 
viewed as the vulnerable people in society, other than children and the crippled and the, you know, mentally ill or who are not like perfect. Um, what do you think? Like, what are we supposed to be careful about? I think women we are so much attached to our emotions more mm -hmm. than men are. Yes. You know, we are more attached to our feminine side. Yeah, that's true. And the things, I think you just have to be careful for yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. To know that, say, I know, that I know my weaknesses. I know my strength, like Tanzile was saying. So you just need to be careful about yourself first before you can be careful about any other thing around you. To know that you can control yourself, to know that you can stand up for yourself in a certain place, to know that you can speak up for yourself in a certain place, mm -hmm. to be able to know that I can't extend in such a territory because I might not be too strong in it, to know that if I keep in my place, I'm safer, or to know that if I keep with these people, I'm safer. So being careful for yourself, that's what I would say. Okay. Yeah, yeah to add to what Isabel said, um, I think uh, being careful, like you can like protect your space, as she said, like protect what you love, protect your, your, yourself, don't, like, don't give yourself out to any kind of person or any kind of situation where you'll be vulnerable and you mm -hmm. end up that's having true. things or like, being in, in situations which you could, have, you could have avoided by staying away from them, you know? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. As Isabel mentioned, um, we need to. We are we are very emotional beings as females. That's true. That's true. So, by protecting yourself, I need to protect the emotion and the physical. The physical is protecting what I do. Social media is a very dangerous place now. Yeah, you can't just be yeah. answering all your DMs because you answer them and then it will lead to something and then the next thing you know you're kidnapped, you're trafficked. So mm -hmm. as females, we are really vulnerable because we trust too easily. Yeah. So trust, like protect your emotions by not trusting too easily. Safeguard the things you tell people. Yeah. Because the same people that you trust and confide in are the same people who, yeah. who have the power to break you in the future if anything may go wrong yeah, in your true. relationship. So protection is two ways, physically and emotionally. That's true. That's true. What if a situation is inevitable? How do you come about it? And you still have to be careful. Well, my, I don't know. I'm a little bit spiritual. I'm a spiritual person and I feel in life you meet moments where you can't escape you have to face them mm -hmm. and I think this are, this is at this are times that you bring God in mm -hmm. always you have, always have to have God with you but in yeah. this kind of situations you call on to God and you tell him that I need you here I need you to walk through with me that's through true, this situation true. you know that's true. okay talking about what to be careful about do you think in relationships we should go the extra mile what no, I don't extra, think so. What is the extra mile? Yeah. Define the extra mile. Yeah. Okay, when you're talking about the extra mile, we're talking about emotionally, like, let's say I have priorities. Let's say I have priorities, I have standards, everything I like. My priorities are high and my standards are straight. I don't bend. But then I see this guy. I really like the guy. And he doesn't fit my priorities. I feel like um, some, some things can be changed, some mm -hmm. things can be learned. So perhaps if you meet this if this guy that you meet checks out your check it takes the entire checklist but then he drinks mm -hmm. you he, he can unlearn drinking but then it is all in your approach it's all in the way that you ask him to babe I mean boyfriend please tone it down <laughs> <laughs> no. tone it down because I mean it's not what you say but it's how you say it so uh. yes we can go the extra mile because women naturally are nurturers so you can nurture yeah. him to stop drinking you can nurture him stop smoking or anything that you don't like so yes sometimes the extra mind is needed it was necessary but i believe i don't i don't really i, I don't really agree with your point because i believe you just really cannot teach somebody something mm -hmm. yet in some cases it works but i'm but in most cases that it works like this you have to give something in return you have to give your emotions your time because the, mm -hmm. the person is not going to change tomorrow you yeah. have to cry so many nights mm -hmm. you're crying because he's not changing yeah. so <laughs> what, what are you supposed to do that kind of like in that kind of like situation what are you supposed to do you know that's why it's a relationship compromise I give, you give, we meet each other halfway. How much are you willing to compromise? How much exactly. would you be willing that's, that's to? That's my question. Are we supposed to go the extra mile? You know, I also think that a relationship is a give and take. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to be bending over for someone who's not going to be doing the same. Because, you yeah, know, I can't be filling exactly. into someone's cup who's not filling into my cup. Yeah. I can't uh -huh. be pouring from an empty one, you know? So when we talk about going the extra mile, I'm going for an extra mile or for someone who's going to go all an extra mile for me. Yeah. Yeah. But like Aisha is saying, you can't, I agree with how she says, you know, sometimes you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you have to keep, you know what you want with your life. You know where you're headed. 
you know. So sometimes you need to, you know, work with that. If this is not good for you, it's not good for you. You can't exactly get into that place and think, I'm going to change him, honey. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. As we are coming to the end of our show, as I'm about to end, you know, as women, we're told, like, we should develop ourselves, you know, self-development and stuff like that. Um, are women the backbone of the society? Yes, I believe, um, not some feminist, but I believe women are the backbone. Like, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. we contribute a lot to the, to the society. Well, women are the backbone of society because, well, as stated in the Bible, we are the neck. What, what a neck offers is support. Mm -hmm. So most things need a woman to help them by you. you there's a quote that says, behind every successful man is a woman. Yeah, so in that way, yes, I, I do admit that. Because when you come back home as a man, tired from work, who will help you relieve the stress if not your, your, your wife, your girlfriend, or mm -hmm. someone that's going to... Because the thing is with women, we listen. I think we're good listeners, so by, we're by you. When, when I talk to you, I will feel better. So yes, we're the backbone in that way. Okay. Yeah, I also agree with Tanzali, what she's saying, that we are the backbone in the sense that we are supporters. Mm -hmm. You know, We are nurturers, we are molders, we are willing to compromise, to... You know, to see something grow. A lot of men are not patient with that. Yes. But women are much more patient than men are. So yes, we are the backbone of the society. I believe so. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. I'm going to allow you to just give a few shout-outs to your friends. All right. Um, I just want to give a shout-out <laughs> to every woman, really, on the campus. I'm, I love women because mm. I'm a woman. So I just want to give a shout-out to every woman that you know don't forget to love yourself. Don't forget to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to be happy. You know, happiness is important because you can never be happy with someone else. Thank you very much for joining us. Please do remember to join us in our next segment.